Welcome to this week's Who the Folk podcast. I'm Lonnie Goldsmith, the editor of TC Jew Folk. This week I talked to Michael Arado, the director of program innovation at Herzl Camp. We talk about the end of his first summer in Webster, what it means to innovate camp programming, and we break down some recent news among the camp leadership team on this week's Who the Folk podcast. But before we hear from Michael, programming is supported by Temple Israel, inspiring Jewish wisdom to help improve an ever-changing world. Register your children for the upcoming religious school year or find out more about their early childhood center, membership information, and more at templeisrael.com slash learn more. Michael Arado, welcome to the Who the Folk podcast. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me, Lonnie. So you just completed your first summer working at Herzl Camp uh, in in Webster, Wisconsin. And and as we're speaking, (laughs) it is your first day back home uh, from camp. How was your first summer as staff at Herzl? It was great. I really had a fantastic time, learned a lot, a lot of new traditions for me. I grew up uh, going to summer camp, but not at Herzl, as you pointed out. It's my first summer. So uh, a lot of learning about that, but felt really welcomed, uh, which was uh, something maybe I was nervous about at the beginning of the summer, somewhere new. I know camp, but they don't know me. Um, But that, that quickly went away. I didn't need to be anxious about that at all. That's fantastic. So your role at camp, your title, I guess, for starters, is Director of Program Innovation. That is a, based on my knowledge of Herzl, uh, is a new title, a new new staff person role. Uh, what is that, I guess, what does that job mean and what did you sort of feel like you brought to it? Yeah, so I supervise all of our activity areas, our programming, our schedules. Um, so in some ways, it's a new role. As you pointed out, it's a new title for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, In others, obviously, people have filled the role of of being responsible for our programming. Um, But with that innovation piece, um, a big charge of mine is to really look at what we're doing right now, uh, how to make what we're doing better, or uh, what new things we want to bring to camp. Um, So we, we tried a bunch of new activities out this year. I'm looking forward already. Uh, even though it's day one back in the off season of what we're going to put together for next summer and and beyond. Um, but that's really uh, where my responsibilities at camp are in, in the programming and activities areas. As someone who's worked at camp, I'm sure you found that the, the off season using air quotes there is gotten shorter and shorter. It's, I mean, there's obviously the, there's the, part of the summer where the campers are there, but I think so much of the rest of the time as year round staff is spent sort of thinking about, it's always thinking about what's next, right? Yeah. And I was surprised. So this is my first year round uh, camp. Oh, position. Okay. And so I was, didn't really know what to expect out of um, the off season. I was surprised by how quickly this summer I was already writing things down for next. And it was maybe the first summer I've ever been, excited for camp to end just so I could start working on the other things. I wasn't excited for it to be over. Right. Um, but in all my previous summers, when, when we go home, camp was over for me too. Uh, whereas now camp's a, a year round job and responsibility, which is pretty cool. I mean, I already have things on my calendar for next week that are going to impact us next summer starting wow. in, in June. So it it's August. I just got home today and I have stuff to get ready for next week. Um, so that was something I just didn't, I didn't know. Would it, would it be busy all the time? Does camp really end for everybody? Yeah. Um, and again, I, I don't mean to sound like I'm, it was excited and ready for the summer to end, but there's so much more I want to do that now we've got some, it's a little slower, obviously in the okay. office. Sure, sure. Together. It's not, go, 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 like, like camp is, uh, when the kids are there, but there's, uh, it doesn't really end. Um, and I mean, we've got campers to register staff to hire, um, certifications to get equipment to buy. So there's always something to do. So without looking too much into the future, how do you, how do you work to stay present in the moment of camp that you're in? 
like as the summer is going on for those, you know, a couple of months when when there are campers and actually even longer than a couple months when you factor in staff development time and mm -hmm. getting just the 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 act of getting camp ready for all of the campers to come up to Webster. How, how do you stay present when you're sort of there's that part of your brain that's always thinking to next? Yeah, I, I'm excited for what's next, but you just have to write it down or whatever other way helps me remember it and put it away because okay. um, that's not going to impact the community and the campers when it's actually going on. So okay. I need to be able to separate that and then just showing up to what we're doing. So whether that's flag meals, some of our hugeen, go into an evening program and just seeing what the kids are up to, interacting with them, staying involved in the actual day-to-day -day life um, because some of our best ideas come from our campers they maybe don't realize that they're coming up with ideas but when they talk about the things they want to do i really see it as our job and programming to kind of take that and and figure out the logistics and the part that maybe a nine-year-old can't or doesn't want to figure out right um and then make it cooler make it better than they maybe even imagine maybe even make it so they don't recognize it as something that they said to me in passing um but i think the campers are um so hyper focused on what's happening at camp in that moment that when you're with them you you can't really be be planning um right. for the future you can't have your head in clouds you're with them you're having fun um it feels like that's all that matters um when you're there so did you have like a notebook that you jotted stuff down on as it popped into your head or a sheet of paper or notebook sheet of paper something in my fanny pack, write it down on my computer later. There's probably a bunch of notes I have to consolidate <laughs> at this point. Um, hopefully I haven't lost any. Um, but yeah, whatever, whatever is around um, and then get it down quickly and move on. Cause like I said, there's not really the time to, to put it in action while we're there. And some sure. of those things, especially if it's related to a, a hiring piece or we need to, put some more investment into a certain area. It's just not going to happen uh, over the summer and just jump into the fun programming we've already got um, because there's a lot um, that's already there. That's already really, really fun and really great. So you'd mentioned this is your first sort of year round camp job. How did you sort of, how, how did you feel like you fit into the the culture of, of Herzl and the traditions of Herzl? Like, did you feel like you were able to pick it up fairly easily? I think fairly easily. There's still, um, it kind of depends. Some of them feel really familiar mm -hmm. right off the bat and maybe are just kind of Jewish overnight camp traditions that people think of as Herzl traditions because that's where they grew up. And I think of maybe as Bieber traditions, that's a summer camp I went to, that okay. maybe there's a slight difference. And so that's an easy adjustment. And then there's others that are completely new to me um, that when they're really beloved by the campers, it's easy to get right into it. Yeah. When there's a couple though, that like the, some of our campers, they're kind of new to it as well. And some of our staff are trying to get them excited about it. And if we don't have the whole camp excited, I'm like, why, what are we doing? And they're like, oh, we do it because of this and this, and my council used to do it. And that's like, oh, well, that's really cool. And so some of it needed a little bit of explanation, but when it's um, 300 kids excited for something, I don't need to know why. That's just, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to be excited about it too. And I can pick up the the why later. Um, and so I think had I not gone to summer camp ever before, it would be near impossible to figure out what, what are we doing? Why, what's, what's going on, but just being aware, there's going to be some weird stuff that happens. <laughs> and that's just summer camp yes. and you just want to go go with it because if you if you stop and think it's weird now you're the weird one um it camp is a place to be crazy to be cool to be like it doesn't matter everything's fun um and so you can't be the one who's who's trying to figure it out necessarily you just kind of have to go with it um and well, I, I think there's like not there going yet there's Herzl's shtick and then there's sort of general Jewish summer camp shtick and it's exactly, you know, just sort of figuring out where they, you know, you start with where they overlap and then you start to learn, learn right. the ways of, of Herzl. And so a couple caught me off guard. There's a couple I still am unfamiliar with. There's definitely some, some ghost stories I'm not allowed to know because they're told to you at certain ages and 
some people it's interesting they'll try to like shepherd me in they're like hey you can you're like new but like you can do this one with us and i actually i try to keep my distance from some of them I'm like look if that's what we're doing and that's the thing you do as an ozo just because i'm here now doesn't mean that like i'm not i'm not gonna ever have that experience and right. i'm okay with that because that's that's not the role i'm in right now um and i think that that's something that i think some people were surprised by but some people really appreciate it they're like yeah just because you're at Herzl, this is i like when some traditions aren't necessarily for everyone it it's for you at a certain age and a certain time in your life and i'm i'm 28 now i'm not i'm not 17 i'm not a counselor in training so right. if i miss out on that one i had one somewhere else and that's okay um so what uh what is your, sort of your camp background you mentioned you came from beaver camp where is that it's in uh southeast wisconsin okay um, so it's about six hour drive from Herzl. Uh, it's a mostly Chicago kids. It's about okay. an hour and 45 minutes North of, of Chicago. Okay. Um, so a couple, so a little bit of overlap. I, I was honestly expecting more. I was surprised when, when it came up to um, some of our staff members or some of our campers, there were only a handful that were like, Oh, do you know so-and-so? And I expected just endless. You must know this person. You must know this person. Of course, you know them. Do you think they went there? I'm not sure. So I was kind of surprised given how close they are. I mean, they're both in Wisconsin and how Jewish geography seems to extend wherever you you end up. Right. Um, there's not a ton of overlap, although my um, my former boss there, the director at Bieber, um, his um, niece and nephew go to Herzl. So oh. um, wild. Yeah. So there is still some serious connection but not um maybe as for with as many people as i was expecting okay yeah that makes sense obviously the jewish camping world is not a huge world no um no it's not <laughs> but what so what was it about the opportunity at herzl when you first saw it originally posted that you were like yeah like what did you heard about herzl that made you feel like this was the right opportunity for it um, so I think the the first thing that really I knew about Herzl, and it certainly was talked about throughout the year, and I was excited to see it, was talking about the stickiness of it. That seems to be, no matter who you mention Herzl to, that's the first thing they want to talk about. So I had heard that, I had heard a little bit about Herzl through some of the people I worked with um, at Bieber, as you mentioned. Jewish camping, pretty small world. Um, and um, so I actually heard about the job through a former supervisor at Bieber, knew I was looking for something year round, a little bit more responsibility um, at camp and said, look, I think you'd be great for this position. Um, I think being creative with programming is always one of my favorite things to do um, as a counselor. So, so to see a role focused on taking programming and elevating it, um, and then having the time uh, in the year round position and the resources to really do that was what was so exciting to me about taking this opportunity. Yeah, the it's nice that the the opportunity was there of something in programming, which is sort of in your wheelhouse, but the opportunity to find creativity mm -hmm. and, and expand on it. And that's it's important. Is that something that you've noticed like within the larger camping community more camps are going towards that sort of model and staffing where able um i don't know i didn't do um a search at every camp obviously Fair. But looking at um places that were were hiring for things in programming it, it certainly depends i think some are, are very happy with the program they run mm -hmm. and aren't that interested in in deviating from it they know it works okay. they have been doing it for a long time um and every camp cares about its traditions um and it really is interesting where those traditions are for yeah. for each camp and which ones are able to be tweaked and which ones are untouchable and i think that was a big challenge for me this summer was was really I, I went in wanting to look at okay well what are we what do we do that 
that has to stay? And what do we do that maybe three people say has to stay? Because I can I can interview as many people as I want before the summer. I can ask their questions. And everyone's obviously got things that matter to them. Uh, but until I saw it, I wasn't able to say, okay, well, this clearly matters to the whole camp. Um, and so figuring out where we can be creative and push the boundaries of what people expect from something and where it's like, this is how we do it. And we're never going to change that. Um, because at camp, something you've done for five years can seem like something you've done forever. Um, and that can be both a positive and a negative. Sometimes it's like we do this program every year. It's so boring. I've done this since I was nine years old. Please change it. Mm -hmm. And other times it's, we've done this since I was 10 and I'm 12 and I can't remember anything ever differently. And you'll ruin everyone's life if you change it. Um, and so you have to have to, to, to see and just watch, watch people's faces, see what people get excited about. Because if people are excited and having fun, I'm having fun. I, I don't want to come and rock that boat. Um, but if we're doing something because we think we have to, and it's not getting us excited, if we're not thrilled that it's on the calendar, let's look at something new. Right. I mean, it, it's it's perspective, right? I mean, perspective is an amazing thing when you're talking about kids at that age. Yeah. You know, and you're talking about these people who are going to camp for, I haven't done the math, like six or seven years. Mm -hmm. as campers and like changing up the tradition to do something different maybe midstream is it, it can be very hard for them to cope with because they only know of a certain way of doing it even if it's not the best way to right to and it. i wouldn't even want our 10 year olds thinking is this the best way um right. to use our time today that is uh it we talk a lot about the the magic of camp. And I think some of our staff, as they grow up and now play a role in shaping it, sometimes we're like, well, the magic's gone. I'm like, well, maybe it looks like it's gone to you now that you have a form to fill out and you have to think about it this way and you have to go collect the materials. But you're now the one putting that show on. Right. And if we do our jobs right, the campers never know how hard we worked to do that. It just looks like it comes together a magical experience, something they'll remember forever. And I think there's still a lot of magic in putting on that show for kids and knowing how hard you work to make it happen um, and seeing it go well. And I think that's just, again, when you're in your first or second year as a counselor, I remember thinking it when I was a 18 or 19 year old as well, like, oh, camp is hard now. Can't, and yeah, it's a job now. And yeah. that's that's good and that's cool and that's fun. But it's a total change um, in perspective. So you you absolutely see camp differently as a 10-year-old as you do when you're a 15-year-old, a 20-year-old. And now in in this role, I, I see camp differently too. Uh, right. And I mean, sure... it, it's really hard. I mean, it's really hard work being a counselor. So I think, you, you know, you're, you're, you're often overworked. You're mm -hmm. usually sleep deprived. And so you, yeah, it can be hard to, to produce the magic. That yes. they can see. And it's hard to, and I think it's also hard to create the magic that you had when you were a camper when, you know, you're seeing how the sausage is made. And it's, that's uh, the thing is it's, it's you're really seeing different. It different eyes. And even when your program goes really well, you still have to clean it up. And so like it, it, the job keeps going. And I think that I really like being able to help our, our counselors see that as well and find the magic in the same moments in a different way or in different moments um, entirely. Having to work for it doesn't get rid of the magic if you if you know that going in or if, you, if you're able to shift your perspective. If you expect it'll look just like it did when you were a camper, that's, that's where the real challenge is. Right, and I think actually the hard work to make it magical for the kids is what makes it special. Yeah. I think mean, I can still think of late nights I put in with my friends putting together programs for our campers that those campers still talk about. Those campers still talk about with me and I still talk about them with my friends that help me put it together. There's there's a lot of fun and reward that can be found in that kind of work, um, especially when it leads to those memories and, and connections with with campers. 
Absolutely. So without giving too much away, are there things that can, that you've got already planned for next year that you think could, uh, could happen or, you know, or is a little too soon to say. There's certainly some things already in the works. Um, For example, we didn't have archery this past year. I already have had counselors come up to me saying, well, what do we need to do to, to make this happen? Um, and so uh, I'm going to hook them up with some courses they can take to get archery certified. Obviously, it could be a pretty dangerous um, activity if we have the the wrong people supervising it or people who ha- are the right people, but maybe don't have the right skills. And so figuring out what we need to do to, to get that going. Um, again, similarly, I, uh, I was a, a sailing specialist my first couple of years as a counselor, we have the boats, we have the lake, we didn't have the person to, to teach sailing this year. So that's another one that's okay. Do we have somebody on staff or an Ozo that, that wants to step up and figure out how to do it? Or do we want to find somebody else entirely? Um, but we have a lot of the resources, the equipment already to put together some really cool activities that take up large chunks of time over, over a couple of days, something like sailing archery, where you can really as a camper, work on your skills, learn something new. A lot of our campers probably don't have the opportunity to do those activities throughout the rest of the year um, and, and make that happen. And then once we have the basics of, okay, we have a counselor that can safely lead archery, giving them the tools and the time to figure out, well, what are some fun things you can do now that you have the basics of shooting a bow properly? and doing so safely. Uh, I was talking with um, a counselor just before we left who was so excited when I told him that we were going to bring it back. He's like, oh, when I was in it, the counselor at the end of the hug week, he took us around and we shot down a bunch of wasps nests around camp and we all got stung. I was like, yeah, so that's like a great memory you have. And now with the perspective uh, being a staff member, you can probably see why that wasn't a good idea and why we're probably not going to do the... (laughs) uh wasp hunt but a really creative use of archery so it's it's taking those fun ideas and and ideas that counselors are excited about and then tweaking them and figuring out okay well what could go wrong why aren't we going to do it exactly that way why aren't we going to run camp the way it was when you were eight and how are we going to be excited about that so there are already a couple ideas in my head about, okay, well, what can we do that's similar and maybe going to have that same effect on a camper with how the MARP visit, with how the EpiPen, um, because I'm certainly not signing off on the, on the wasp hunt, but that's not, I, I'd never like to end the conversation with, and I'm not signing off on that, like go away. It's okay. Well, what, what doesn't work there? Right. What's good about it? Because there's definitely something good about what you just brought to me. And how do we just have the good side or have as much of the good as possible? That is utterly wild that somebody once upon a time thought going around camp shooting down wasps nest with an arrow is a good idea. Yeah. Like, even if you're successful, there's still danger. Like there's, there's arrows whizzing by cabins. There's, this is obviously the danger of the of the wasps themselves. Um, yeah. So again, when you work with a bunch of 18, 19, 20 year olds, yeah. there's a lot of creative energy. There's a lot of excitement. And there's occasionally ideas like that. We're like, wow, I can't believe you thought about that for like a while. You're right. really excited to tell me about it. And right off the bat, it's terrible. Like we can't, we can't, but I'm still excited. You're excited. Let's take that energy. Let's redirect it. Let's make something fun happen. Right. I mean, it's, you're finding the balance of the, the super energetic creative counselor with the underdeveloped frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, They have to be the adults, Yeah. but they're not always ready to be. And so I really have to be. Yes. The adult. Yep. Um, Which is, um, Oh, I don't know many other workplaces or industries where it's like, okay, we're working with a bunch of 10 year olds and then our adults are 
19. And then we have like another level of like, we kind of call ourselves like real adults, but that's not, I, I don't think that's fair to our counselors. They are real adults. We're giving them a tremendous amount of responsibility, yes. more than 18, 19 year olds get in really any other job that is available to them. We're yeah. asking them to take care of people's children. Um, but occasionally they do remind us of, oh yeah, you are a teenager, maybe working your first job and, and you didn't quite understand the responsibility in this way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so there was some news out of Herzl earlier this week, yesterday, as you and I are speaking, um, the news sent out to the community that Josh Levine, the Herzl executive director is, is stepping down and moving back to the West close to West coast to be closer to family. Um, certainly have always enjoyed every interaction I had with Josh and wish him the best of luck in his, uh, next endeavor but i i guess i had wanted to ask you how do you knowing that there's going to be some leadership transition within the the team at herzl how do you plan for next summer and sort of keeping up the culture that has been built over this you know the, the eight ten twelve weeks that have just wrapped up yeah and that that will be a challenge uh we have a lot of new people I work really closely with Danya. This was also her first summer. Um, mm -hmm. She's director of um, camp and culture. So we're both really thinking about that. And there's a, we've made a lot of positive strides this summer. There was a lot of positive momentum, um, a lot of tears on the many, many last days we had, which are always a good metric of um, success. I mean, even today, leaving with the last few bit of staff, a lot of tears, a lot of promises to come back. And so there's a lot of positive feelings. I think now there, there's some sadness. I think Josh will really be missed. Um, I've certainly really enjoyed working with him. Um, but I think we, we just have to build on the success of this year and, and really have those conversations with our, our counselors, our Azreem, our families about, okay, well, this is what it means. Yes, it's a big change, um, but this is what we did this summer. This is what it's going to look like in the summer to come. And, and we'll keep you maybe not involved in, in the process. We're obviously not going to ask all of our counselors and families for input on every single person that, that comes around uh, in this executive director search, but keep communication open um, with them. And I think that was one of the biggest things that staff were positive about was how involved they felt in our decision making, whether that's directly and, and helping us make those decisions or with uh, with us just keeping them um, apprised and aware of, well, this is what we're going to do and here's why. Um, and we're always available for you to give our feedback, even if or your feedback, even if we're not looking to have your input on the, the decision, we still want to know how it affects you. And I think our staff in particular really appreciated that. Um, and so I think we show that that's still possible, even in a change as large as this one. Yeah. And you mentioned Danya Kornblum's title is not just is director of, of camp and culture like that and culture part. That's a that's something else that you don't see often at camps either. Or at mm -hmm. least I haven't. I, in I don't think I've ever seen that. Um, and obviously I haven't been in the year-round camp world that long but i certainly looked at a lot of job postings um mm -hmm. when i was looking to to take a year-round role and this, this is the first time i've seen that and i think that is really one of the things she's most passionate about is having a, a positive work culture at camp and and that's something that doesn't just exist over the summer um we i think do a really good job of, of keeping camp going for people in the other 10 or in a lot of our campers lives, 11 months um, that they see as, as the time in between when camp happens. Um, but Herzl's still a presence in, in their lives and a positive one. Um, and I think that's going to be really helpful in this period, the stability that the Herzl feeling will provide them, even though, now, if most people have been up to date on their emails, and certainly with the amount that uh, 
people here like to chat and talk and the importance Herzl has in this community. Everyone's probably aware now. And so is thinking about this big change. Um, but I think the impact this summer, those feelings, I think will will stick around for a long time. Absolutely. And in the interest of full disclosure, I should have said it before I got into the question uh, and talking about Josh and what's to come. My wife is on the Herzl Board Executive Committee. Uh, well, we're going to end on a fun note. Last couple of questions, Michael, and we certainly appreciate your time as you uh, settle back into life at home. Uh, first, what is your favorite Jewish holiday? My favorite Jewish holiday is Pesach. Okay, how come? How come? Um, early on, I think I liked it because of the the hunt for the Afikoman. Um I'm the oldest in my family, including my cousins and all of them. So I was either the best at finding it or was kind of appointed as the uh, head of our negotiating um, committee. Very important roles, both. Yes. So I, I was able to stay involved in the program, to, regardless of how old I was at the table. Um, and then um, in college, I started hosting seders for my friends, sometimes primarily for Jewish friends, and then sometimes for uh, my friends who had never been to a, a seder before. And so that was always really fun. Um, it was fun to finally get to lead it. Um, I had heard the story so many times, usually from my dad. And so getting to sit kind of at the head of the table um, and hold court for, depending on how hungry my friends were, especially the non-Jewish ones, we, we did kind of move through it. Yeah. Uh, they weren't they weren't used to it. They didn't know what to expect. I don't think they knew that it could really drag on. So we kept it pretty fun. Um, I think they did enjoy the uh, four cups of wine aspect quite a bit as well. Um, so that's always been uh, my personal favorite. Understandable. Um, and what is your favorite Jewish food? Um, my favorite Jewish food is probably my grandma's brisket, uh, okay. which I um, get to serve um at um these uh satyrs so that's always fun nice. um i have uh her on the phone to help me out as as we get it started um she's given me the written ingredients as well as uh some some secret info that that she's kind of metered out i think my aunt finally knows the secret um she's she uh has become more open um with her secrets okay. uh, in the kitchen um recently um but i'm sure there's still a few for me to learn that's the essence of jewish cooking though right is having the grandmother on the phone talking you through the family recipe so you can make it yourself mm -hmm. and then like even though i said i'm the oldest in the family it still shocks me like the amount of babying that comes through especially in the kitchen and i, I studied i studied food science and really? i'm like, um, I cook a lot. It's something I'm really passionate about. I've been cooking for a very long time. So my grandma and my grandma knows all of this, right. but it still might be like, okay, now, Michael, you need to turn on the oven. And we get to the steps to really make this brisket yours, as opposed to the, the basics of right. Put heating something. Correct. No, <laughs> yeah. That's so, absolutely. um, and the, again, if she were on the phone with my brother teaching the same recipe, that would absolutely be an important first step. So I'm glad that she still remembers it because um, it. thinking now that my role at camp, I am always surprised which instructions I leave out that I should have included. Right. Because there are things you do it, you do it enough times, you don't even necessarily think about it. It right. just becomes rote. But... Mm -hmm. But there are times where, oh, yeah, I probably needed to mention that. OK, I should have said something. Yeah, yeah. that one's on me. I knew it. They didn't. Yep, absolutely. Now we're both frustrated. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Well, Michael Arado, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate getting to meet you and getting to connect and talk about your first year at camp. And uh, we all look forward to see what sort of uh, program innovation comes to Webster next summer. But thank you for your time and enjoy, uh, enjoy a little bit of uh, R&R before it all ramps up again. All right. Thank you so much, Lonnie. The Who the Folk podcast is part of the Jew Folk Podcast Network, a product of Jew Folk Inc. Please subscribe, rate, and review the show wherever you get your podcasts. 
If you have suggestions for other podcast guests, please email them to me at editor at tcjufolk.com. For our other shows, check out tcjufolk.com slash podcast.